the Indus Valley civilization, nobody actually knew that it existed until it was accidentally discovered while a railway was built. Then they found that this culture had had a language, a fully developed written script. It's about 5,000 years old, but there isn't a single Rosetta Stone that enables us to translate that script into any more recent language. If you wish to pass information to a distant future, if you wish it to be preserved, you wouldn't be smart to just write it down. Welcome to the mysterious and ancient city of Mohenjo-Daro, one of the largest settlements of the Indus Valley civilization and a marvel of prehistoric urban planning buried deep in today's Pakistan. Since the discovery of the Indus Valley civilization, we have to accept that civilization in, in India is at least 5,000 years old. Now, let's unravel the secrets of this place, explore its sophisticated drainage systems, the iconic Great Bath, and decode what secrets might have existed in this magnificent city over 4,000 years ago. I want to know what else is going to be found that hasn't been investigated yet at all. We're just touching the edge of a huge mystery. Mohenjo-Daro, situated in the Sindh province of Pakistan, is a key archaeological site from the Indus Valley Civilization, also known as the Harappan Civilization. Its name, translating to Mound of the Dead in Sindhi, hints at the mysteries buried within this ancient city, offering a unique glimpse into one of the world's earliest urban societies. The site was discovered in 1922 during a broader archaeological survey of the Indian subcontinent conducted by the Archaeological Survey of India. Rakaldas Bandyopadhyay, known as R.D. Banerjee, stumbled upon what he initially thought was a Buddhist stupa in the Larkana district. Further investigation revealed the ruins of an ancient city predating any known Buddhist settlements, marked by sophisticated urban features like baked brick structures. They found that there were these actually very, very sophisticated, very complex mud, mud brick structures on a very large scale. Major excavations kicked off in 1924 under Sir John Marshall, the then Director General of the Archaeological Survey of India, and his deputy, Ernest McKay. Their efforts unveiled an advanced city with a well-planned layout, efficient drainage systems, brick houses, granaries and public baths, all indicating a highly organized society. The excavation methods were quite methodical for the time, involving grid-based trench digging which allowed for a clearer understanding of the city's layout. Marshall also emphasized the use of photography and meticulous on-site notes to document the findings accurately. Among the most remarkable discoveries was the Great Bath, suggesting the site's use for ritualistic or ceremonial purposes, alongside a sophisticated sewage system that highlighted the city's advanced urban planning and sanitation awareness. Post-1947 partition of India, Mohenjo-Daro became part of Pakistan, and new excavation phases were led in the 1950s and 1960s by Pakistani archaeologist Dr. Ahmad Hassan Dani, his work helped uncover lower layers of the city and explore residential areas that had not been previously excavated. There's a, a lost civilization which is now accepted by archaeology within relatively recent memory, and that's the Indus Valley civilization. These later excavations focused more on understanding the daily lives of the inhabitants, with numerous artifacts such as pottery, tools and ornaments providing insights into their daily activities, trade practices and cultural aspects. As archaeological techniques evolved, later excavations at Mohenjo-Daro incorporated modern methods including stratigraphic analysis, which aided in more accurately dating the city's layers. There was also a significant emphasis on using refined conservation techniques to preserve delicate artifacts and building materials exposed during the digs. From the 1970s onwards, Efforts predominantly shifted towards preserving the integrity of the site as it faced threats from salinity, waterlogging and deterioration of materials. In recognition of its value and the need for protection, Mohenjo-Daro was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1980, which helped attract international attention and funding aimed at preserving and protecting this ancient window into early urban life. Continuing from the intriguing discoveries and preservation efforts, the urban layout and architecture of Mohenjo-Daro are indeed remarkable, reflecting a level of sophistication and scale that's astounding for its time period, around 2600 BCE to 1900 BCE. As a critical part of the ancient Indus Valley civilization, this city offers profound insights into the early techniques of urban planning and architecture that have stood the test of time, 
Mohenjo-Daro spanned at least one and a half square kilometers, with some estimates suggesting it might have covered over five square kilometers at its peak, making it one of the largest cities of its time. The city was meticulously planned with a grid system, dividing it into a lower town and a citadel area. Streets running north-south and east-west sliced the city into well-organized blocks, demonstrating the urban planner's keen grasp of design principles. Residential blocks were designed with precision to ensure uniform appearance from the outside and direct access to street-side drainage, reflecting a controlled approach to urban development and adherence to municipal regulations. Is knowledge preserved and passed down through the ages? Yes, I think it is. The city's drainage system was extraordinarily advanced for its era. Each house was connected to a street-side drainage channel through individual drainage pits, a setup that showcases early mastery in sanitary engineering. These drains, constructed from baked brick and gypsum mortar, included manholes at intervals for maintenance, features that would not be out of place in a modern city. The buildings of Mohenjo-Daro were primarily built using sun-dried and fired mud brick. Baked bricks were particularly used for constructing bath and drainage structures to better withstand moisture. The architectural variety within the city was notable, with homes ranging from small single-room dwellings to large multi-storied buildings, indicating a society with socio-economic diversity. A typical house featured a courtyard surrounded by rooms, providing light and air to living spaces, with some houses boasting two or even three stories. The standardization in brick size, typically measuring 7 by 14 by 28 centimeters, suggests there was a centralized system for the production and distribution of building materials. Most materials for construction were likely sourced locally, given the abundance of clay in the Indus region, ideal for brickmaking. However, special items like the large stones used in some public buildings might have been sourced from further away and transported to the site. When we compare the urban planning and architectural sophistication of Mohenjo-Daro with that of ancient Egypt during the same period, a fascinating picture emerges. While the Egyptians focused more on monumental structures like pyramids, constructed from large stone blocks quarried from distant locations such as Tura and Aswan, the people of Mohenjo-Daro excelled in creating a functional urban landscape that prioritized civic amenities and residential comfort, Building on the sophisticated urban planning and architecture of Mohenjo-Daro, the archaeological site is also renowned for some extraordinary artifacts that shed light on the cultural and technological advancements of the Indus Valley civilization. We're going to see more physical evidence for this, more as time goes by. The dancing girl is a captivating bronze figurine, merely ten and a half centimeters tall, capturing a young girl in a dynamic pose with one hand on her hip and the other casually dangling at her side. The level of detail in the figurine is remarkable, showing off intricate jewelry and a detailed hairstyle that points to a highly sophisticated sense of aesthetics and craftsmanship. This small statue is not just a piece of art. It highlights the advanced metalworking skills of the time, being one of the few metal artifacts discovered at Mohenjo-Daro. Another significant find is the so-called Priest King statue, a small steatite sculpture standing about 17 and a half centimeters high. It depicts a male figure seated, adorned in an intricately engraved robe and wearing a fillet around his head, which might have once held a feather or other decoration. The sculpture's serene expression and the precision of its beard trimming suggest meticulous grooming and possibly a high social or religious status. Some scholars believe this figure might symbolize an idealized form of leadership or divine authority, integrating both political and religious power, though it may not represent a specific individual. Perhaps the most architecturally impressive discovery at Mohenjo-Daro is the Great Bath. Located centrally on the Citadel Mound, this large pool measures roughly 12 meters by 7 meters and is about 2.4 meters deep. It's constructed from finely fitted bricks sealed with a layer of natural tar, making it waterproof, an advanced construction technique for the time. The Great Bath is believed to have been used for ritual purification rites, reflecting the civic and religious practices of the Indus people. The structure was ingeniously fed by a well, and an adjacent drain allowed for the emptying and cleaning of the bath, indicating a sophisticated management of water resources. Comparing the Great Bath with Roman baths brings interesting insights. Like Mohenjo-Daro's bath, Roman baths were central to social and religious life, going beyond mere hygiene to serve as gathering places for social interaction and ritual practices. 
However, Roman baths were typically more complex, featuring varied temperatures across different rooms and incorporating technologies like steam baths and underfloor heating, showing different scales and advancements in engineering. An intriguing theory related to Mohenjo-daro's significance within the Indus Valley civilization is the hydraulic hypothesis, which suggests that the city served as a religious center coordinating the management of an extensive system of irrigation canals. This hypothesis proposes that the city's leadership wielded both political and religious authority, crucial for managing the water resources vital for agriculture in the arid environment.